Well, we're joined by Paige Goodyear. How are you doing, Paige? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. You're just back from a run, you tell me. Yeah. Training hard, getting ready. Excellent. All in preparation for November 26th. 20, yeah, three weeks today, actually. Not it long is, at all. It is. Yeah, November yep. 26th, up in Sheffield, Unified Promotion Show. It's a big night for you all round, really, isn't it? I mean, we'll come on to the significance of kind of women's boxing and, and Unified yeah, Promotions, yeah. but it's your professional debut. Yeah, it's massive. Like, obviously, I've had fights, like 30 fights, amateur fights, but this is a whole different chapter. This is massive for me. I take it as big as when I was in the World Championships. Like, it's even bigger than that. It's, it's the biggest fight in my career. Yeah, and there's an awful lot of stuff that you won't know about what's coming. You know, you've had 30 amateur fights. By that 30th amateur fight, you're in the rhythm and the, the flow of doing it, I Yeah, guess. it's like, I feel like it's a completely different sport. Even yeah. though, obviously, it's the same boxing, amateur and professional are, are completely different in my eyes. Yeah. I mean, let's go back to your amateur career, because you're 21 years old, is that right? 21 December, yeah. 21 December. So 20, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. Which is mad. So you're making the leap in professional boxing. You box at a high, high amateur level. Um, yeah. Bronze at the 2018 Youth World Championship. World champ yeah, World Championships, yeah. Um, um, yeah Europeans, I mean, went to Europeans, won national titles, yeah, been on different England camps, yeah. Yeah, but you've we'll done do. an awful lot. You fit a lot into 20 years worth of, uh, of life. And at what age did you start boxing? Uh, I started when I was 10, actually, um, but I did do kickboxing first for a couple of years, but I just got bored of it. Like there was, I feel like there's only so much you can go in kickboxing. And then my uncle found my coach, Maka, and then ever since I couldn't get out of the gym. <laughs> so are you taking your yeah. amateur uh, coach into the pro game? I am, yeah. See that he's in my corner. Excellent. So there'll be that familiarity, if nothing else, of, of taking that. Yeah, 100%. Because he also used to be a pro boxer. Um, the reason he opened his amateur gym, actually, was because he got a bleed on the brain, unfortunately. So he yeah. couldn't box again. Um, but yeah, he, he's all about the pro boxing. So, yeah. So is he excited, then, to be taking you through as uh, a young protege into women? Yeah, because I, obviously he's been there from the start as well. So he's watched me grow up and... He's been there for each title I've won. And it's like, it's a new chapter, but then it's like, it's something different for us both because we've had to train, like, train different, like, in different ways. And it's like, I, how can you describe it? It's like a new fire in my belly um, because, obviously, there's only, only so much you can do in the amateur game. And I feel like, because I've reached so highly in that, the, and then COVID hit, I just think it was the right step to go with. Were you tempted to stay amateur and start looking at the kind of GB setup and Olympic cycles? Um, so, in fact, I was after co I was on, it was basically either turn professional or go on my third GB assessment. So, because I'd, I'd passed the two and then I was on my third and final one to get in. But then obviously I had Richard coming through with the offer and basically my coach Maka and his wife Clara basically I was like a mom and dad um and I sat down with them and I was like look what's what's your opinion what do you like what do you think I should do and they both basically said how like women's boxing is thriving which it is rightly so in pro like it's going amazing and I just think I won't get a better opportunity than now to be honest um Obviously, the Olympics are in, like, three three years' time now instead of four. <coughs> I feel like by then, a lot of more people would turn over and they'd already be a few steps ahead of me. Whereas when I turn over to young age, like, it's given me that advantage to get that experience under my belt again, to grow, like, through the pro ranks and become world champion and what another dream. Yeah. And have you had discussions with other professionals, male, female, anyone in the sport, about kind of what what you can expect as the differences, not just in the ring, but out of the ring of kind of, now you've got to sell yourself, haven't you, as a as a boxer. Yeah. Whereas in the amateurs, you turn up, fight, go home. Now it's kind of yeah, it's, a different package. It's completely different. Like I've already found like since it being announced, um, in the amateur, I'll just used to get in the ring and fight. Whereas now you actually sell tickets. You have to communicate a lot more with people. Like every day my phone's popping off. I, I feel like I live in my phone. Um, to and from it, like from everywhere, 
you just have to keep advertising yourself and basically it's all down to that one fight but there's so much more behind the scenes compared to amateur within yeah. the professional <laughs> ranks yeah and it's not just an eight week training camp it's all the as you no. say promoting yourself promoting the event promoting yeah. everything that comes with it um how are you finding that that blend are you able to kind of manage your time well for it um at first i was getting a bit stressed out i'm not gonna lie i was getting a bit stressed and i thought oh my god like this is just so different to what I'm used to. But now I'm in a routine, like I'm a in a pattern with everything. Um, I I'm finding my timing schedule a lot better and I'm getting used to it now. I feel like obviously everything's all going to be new, like the first the first chapter of this like pro debut. I think once I'm in a routine, I, I just flow and I get used to it. And do you feel, um, I mean, going back through the, the decades, really, women's boxing, you go back to like Jane Couch and she kicked down a lot of barriers and doors and then yeah. the likes of Katie Taylor and Tasha Jonas have kind of come through and, and opened them up again. Like you're of that, that third wave almost now of being able to, to hopefully take advantage of their hard work as well and be able to build on that. Does it, do you feel like you're part of something now that is just accepted? It's, it's not even questioned. Yeah, definitely, 100%. Um, I actually spoke to Katie Taylor up at the Gymshark HQ a few months back. I was yeah. invited up there. Um, and she said, like, how women's boxing back then when she started, how there was so much things in place. And I just thought, now, we're, like, in a completely different generation. We are, a, we are basically a unit of what everybody knows that women can fight. And we've proved that in the past. And we're about... Us, I think our main generation now is about inspiring the young generation to come through and not be scared to get in the ring with the lads and have a, have a spot with them. Because back then, it was hard. Like, when I first started, I was the only girl in my gym. Yeah. But obviously now, there's like, I'd say there's a good 10 girls down my gym. Like, and it's good to see. It's really good to see. Because you walk in there and it's not, it's not just a bunch of lads anymore. It's like they're mixing, they're mixing well. And lads ain't like, oh, I ain't sparring that girl. My coach, I, I actually had one person who said, oh, I'm not sparring a girl. My coach was like, well, you best do because she's going to batter you otherwise. <laughs> so it's one of them, isn't it? Like, you just have to, you've just got to deal with it this day and age because there's nothing's going nothing's to stop us from doing it. So everybody's just got to accept it. Yeah, I, I remember chatting with one of the Upton brothers um, who were kind of based out of Ireland. They were saying when they were on the Island squad and they had Katie Taylor there, they said she was the hardest work for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> because she wanted to prove herself against... You've got to, yeah, you've got to. Like, I've always, that's always the way to be in my gym because the lads at first was like, oh, it's a girl, like training. I always went that extra mile to prove them wrong and then they recognise you. I'd be like, mm, like, What's she doing over there? It's like little things like that. Excellent. What can people expect who haven't seen you fight before? What kind of style are you going to bring uh, up in Sheffield? I feel like my style fits the programme like perfectly, to be honest. I've, I've always been that pro style. Like I settle on my punches. Like I'll, I'll like that inside work. Um, I like a good I like a good fight when I need to have a fight, but not always. I know that. Like obviously it's a so a lot smaller gloves in the pro game. So you have got to be careful in that sense. Um but it's it's exciting. I feel like even though it's a bit different, I'll take my experience from my amateur fights into the pro game and uh make it step by step and climb up that ladder. Yeah, and you'll be fighting, is it welterweight? Yeah, well, welter, super welter. Yeah. Yeah, between the two. Do you feel, I mean, I, I know kind of it's documented that there aren't as many kind of female boxers as male boxers um, kind of within the, the sport. Do you feel you have to be flexible about that weight um, and taking on fights at kind of like either 147 or 154, wherever it may be? Yeah, I feel like you have to nowadays. Like, it's not even just that. I don't go in there and think, oh, I just want to win one title at one way. My mindset is to be the best at all different kinds of weights. So that's me as thinking I need to be able to get myself to them different kinds of weight. Um, it's just one of them that I'm going to have to deal with. Um, but that's the right training schedule, right training sessions that you're going to have to go through. And with within with time, I'll, my body will get used to it, like fluctuating. Because I do agree that women's bodies are different in that sense to males. 
Um, but it is easily possible and it's easily been shown. Yeah, and also you're young enough that your body will, you know, change and develop over exactly. the years. And yeah. As you said, that it will, uh, you know, weight may come off, go on. Uh, you've mm-hmm. got plenty of time to, to look at other weights. Yeah, definitely. Um, who were your idols growing up? Like, who did you sit and watch, uh, you know, as you were 10 years old getting into a boxing gym? Uh, you know what? It was actually my coach, to be honest. Uh, Darren McDermott. He was basically... I used to watch some of his fights like, against Barker and that and before like, he got the bleed on, bleed on the brain. And then I used to watch like Sugar Ray Robinson and stuff, people like that. Um, the main female has always been Katie Taylor for me. Um, Nicola Adams did push like women's boxing and Natasha Donas. And now Terry Harper, to be honest, Terry Harper's doing really well for women's boxing. Um, but I just think it different people have like different different kind of ways. And I like to not just focus on one person. I like to add different bits from different people. So you're going to borrow lots of different styles and bits from uh, from people's... Nah, not just that. Look, I feel like my style is mainly like... It's mainly like Darren's funny. It's mainly <laughs> like my coaches. I'm not going to look... Because that's how I've always been taught. Um, I've always been taught that way. And you, you become yourself a habit of getting into that sort of style. But don't get me wrong. If I need to switch up, I will switch up because of that experience I've got from the amateurs. Yeah. Like in the world championships, you don't know who you're fighting, you don't know what country you're gonna come against. If you've got a big massive Russian coming in front of you, you're not gonna stand there and be you like you're gonna be like flicking them off and going like in and out. Do you know what I mean? Each fighter's got their own style and I'll I'll adapt to what each fighter I fight. Yeah. Um and how good is it to be making your debut on what is an all female card as well? Um it's a hell of a yeah. statement to have an all female card. Um, televised with a, a big crew of people there. We'll, we'll come on to some of that shortly, but um, how big is that for you in your uh, kind of, not just your career, but in terms of your your statement and being able to take women's boxing that next step? That force. I feel like, you know what, I feel like it's history making because I don't think like, it's been done before. Um, no, yeah, I was having this conversation yesterday. I, don't, I can't think of a yeah. board license show that's been all female. It, 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 I honestly feel like it's massive. It's massive for everybody. And to have people there like uh, Spencer Oliver, Anthony Crawler, Natasha Jonas herself. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can't get much better than that, really. Does that bring a pressure with it? The likes of, as you say, I mean, Richard Pox and be there, Gareth A. Davis, Crawler, yeah. Jonas, Spencer Oliver. You know, that's, um, that's an elite list of names within boxing, of, you know, yeah. in and out of the ring. Yeah, a little bit, but I feel like I'll thrive from it. Like I love meeting like new people and that. And I, I already stress I already stress Richard out enough. So it's like meeting him on another day, really. <laughs> so yeah, that's just normal for me. Um, but I'm gonna I feel like I'll be in my stride, me like being around all them people. Yeah. And there's everything I've dreamt of my pro debut, it's happening. So why not? Why not be in that be in that position of actually being able to fight in the place that you fought you fought at before, but in a different scenario? And it's like obviously people come in and doing like traveling from different places, but they're all coming for me. Whereas with amateur, you'll be on an amateur show and they're coming for different people, but the main focus is on you this time. Um, so it is massive, but I'm ready to take that step. So you fought there before. Uh, I fought in Sheffield a few times, yeah. Ah, okay. Um, amateur, but it's obviously different. Like, I fought a lot of places. I remember, like, fighting. Tra- you just have to travel, like, three hours just to get a skills back sometimes, just for the like, the amateur game. Ah, the pro game be easy now for you. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the fact that it's televised on sporty stuff, um, does that bring another yeah. pressure? Or you seem quite relaxed about it all, really, in terms of the, um, the pressures? I d- to be fair, I've not really thought about that much because I just feel like we've it was like my fights in the world. They were I'd a link to watch on TV and some fights I've had amateur have been on BBC Sport and stuff. Um so it's it's what like it's added pressure because obviously a lot more people on the telly will be watching. But I feel like it's that little one more step that I, where I'm showcasing my skills and hopefully 
there's some young kids back at home, they'll be watching and obviously take up on the sport. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the fact that Unified is focusing upon women's boxing, um, Unified Promotions, and as part of that, Susanna um, Schofield being the, the head of Unified. Um, yeah. How big is that, do you think, within what is traditionally a kind of male-dominated sport? Does that inspire, you know, yourself and others that are involved? Um, do you think yeah. it will push the, the sport on another level? I think definitely. Um, when I first heard about it all, I was like, yeah, let's go, let's do it. Because I feel like nobody's ever done this before. Like, that's how I said it's history-making. We're the first group of girls to obviously come together and be like, this is like women's, like, obviously unified promotion is all about taking that women's boxing to the next level and we're making a statement to see how everything a male boxer does like obviously nowadays to be fair there's a lot more girls on different shows like recently to be honest but beforehand it was rarely seen like to have a girl on a show to have a show that's full of girls is just massive to be honest yeah yeah um and then finally, kind of where can people uh, or what can people expect of you on fight night? On fight night, people will expect to see um, an experienced Paige Goodyear in the ring. Even though I've not fought for two years, I've took on a lot of knowledge um, within the past 12 months, especially from like turning professional um, and explosive power. I'm, here, I'm not here to like pick up numbers. I'm here to put on a show. And that's what it's about. I like that. It's very confident, the uh, the explosive power element. You've got to, like, I'm not here, to, like, I've always been told you don't get paid for overtime. Um, and that's what it is. You don't get paid for overtime. So whoever they put in front of me, I'll be there to win. I ain't, I ain't no, taking no chances. Excellent. Excellent. Right. So November 26th, up in Sheffield, Unified Promotions uh, on yep. Stuff TV, your professional debut. That all sounds pretty amazing, really. Yeah, it sounds pretty good to me. Excellent. Well, Paige, I wish you nothing but the best. I look forward to seeing you fight. Um, it'll be a hell of a night for anyone that can, uh, can tune in and watch it or get there. 